Welcome to this month's message. Our prayer emphasis for January 2009 is to learn what it means to have Jesus as our shepherd, no matter how chaotic life gets. Recently, I've been listening to the CDs from Chuck Colson called On Being the Body, a reflection on his book, The Body, that was so helpful for the church. And he talks a lot about the experiences of the churches in North America following the events of the tragic destruction of the Twin Towers in New York on September the 11th, 2001. He mentions that it was a time in which America returned to the church. Very close friends of ours were actually working in an adjacent building during the time of that destruction. They watched the Twin Towers fall. They went out into the streets of New York. My friend tells me how there was clusters of hundreds of people on the streets of New York praying and huddling together. The downtown churches opened their doors to the bodies and the hearts and the souls of the people of New York that day. Certainly, Americans had returned to church. For many Americans, church had become a forgotten experience. And yet 9-11 drove people back to the church. The church was there for these hurting people. But Colson notes in his book that not even four months following this episode, there was a mass exodus of people from the pews of those same churches. Why did this take place? Certainly a lot of it has to do with the fickle nature of human beings and an intense spiritual warfare. I understand that. But Colson makes a very good point. He said, for most churches following 9-11, by four months later, they were back to business as usual. And so people who came to those churches looking for the big questions of life left disappointed and hopeless. Colson's observation is that the churches in America dropped the ball. People after 9-11 came to the church intrinsically looking for answers to why would this happen? Is there a God in heaven who really cares? Uh, what happens to my loved ones who I've just lost? Is there hope in this world as well as comfort? These are the kind of questions that they came for. Colson acknowledges that there must have been some churches throughout America that answered those big questions of life. But for the most part, it was daily schedule. Instead of talking about heaven and hell, a hope in the midst of chaos, the churches were giving the message of come join us, join our schedules, Get busy in ministry, join the choirs, pay your tithes, and become part of the church. And the pews began to empty rather quickly. The result of this lack of vision on the part of the church meant that many people coming to look for, for answers to life actually left the church once more, even more hopeless than before. To these issues of life, Scripture teaches us that we do have a shepherd who loves us, who cares for us, even in the midst of a broken, dysfunctional world. And he is always with us, and we will not be in want. He, the Lord Jesus Christ, is the good shepherd of John chapter 10. He is the one the psalmist is talking about, the one who leads us, the one who guides us, the one who loves us. Even if we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we need not fear any evil. This is the shepherd that is given to us by God. Many people in our churches and in our communities have lost their jobs and have lost their marriages. In some cases, ill health has even taken their life. And they still carry these large questions of life. The issues that come as a result of a cosmic terrorism that we have 24-7. And we need to be ready to give answers to those questions. As we pray this month, let's remember that we have a shepherd who loves us, who leads us, who guides us, who answers our prayers, and that he uses us to, this, to speak to people who are hurting in this world. May God bless you as you pray this month.